Well, it's Wednesday. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. I better make a video. All right, if you go to exit 61 on I-44 in Missouri, you'll find the Hoods uh, truck stop, and it's a good size one. I stayed here actually last night, which is odd. I had 20. I have 20 minutes left on my clock. It is the sun is setting, but you can see they have massive parking, and that's what I like about these non-commercialized truck stops like Pilot and Loves. Um, usually the uh, the uh, non-pilot and loves truck stops are just, I've always, I've been finding them to be awesome. So I, and I rate my truck stops not on the services that they may have inside, because they all have bathrooms. This one has showers too. They have certified scales, but it's all about the parking. And I'm, if you could see my truck, for those that don't know, I drive for Maverick. Uh, it's right here. I mean, I don't have far to walk, and it's it's eight o'clock. And if I were to go to a Pilots or a Loves, it would be like jam packed. I think I got. Well, here's my load and uh, tips and tricks. Hmm. Well, here's a tip: make sure you get the right weight on the steel you're carrying. Um, I got my load sheet today out of Fort Smith. And I was looking for weights so I know how many chains to put on in securements, so I would know how to secure this. Because you got to you secure it all, then you go get your paperwork. Uh, I'm glad I didn't tarp it. It's not required to be tarp, but I mean, if it was, this was a tarp job, I would have had to throw securements over my tarp because when I read the paperwork, it said. The only weight I could find said 38,000 something pounds. I'm like, oh, that's pretty nice. Let me show you the end here. And so I, uh, I, I was like, well, 38,000, I could do that with five securements because that's 40,000 pounds worth of uh, securement value. I've got five uh, stacks of uh, steel rod all squished together and we do a we do a wrap around the the back and the front to hold it nice and tight together sometimes they put blocks in between but if they don't and so here I guess the tip and trick I'm showing you today is uh, use the right wood <laughs> uh, let me show you what I mean um, the uh, timbers we get with Maverick transportation they have uh, we have s several that are beveled edges and then we have this is a poor example because it's a but it's a square edge 4x4 four four, whereas these 4x4's four have a beveled edge well I've only got two of these 4x4 four four pieces well not thinking I was how they were going to load this I was thinking oh okay usually they put uh, blocks in between each bundle of steel thereby uh, not requiring a bulkhead but they didn't put blocks in there and I had already put my 4x4 four four down there so I've only got um, and there's a piece missing right here but this is actually a 4x4 four four piece just uh, chunks are missing out of it and then one beveled one. I can't stack another really beveled one on this small lip up here. I guess I could, but it would be wobbly. But anyway, I got this like partial bulkhead and I think it serves the purpose. It's gonna, any of those things that slide forward, which they won't, cause I mean, I cr my chains are tight, but you never know. So anyway, I put this bulkhead up there, just a, you know, a little safety factor on there. So, Reiterating, use your beveled timbers first before using your square timbers because if you have a build a bulkhead, uh, you'll have uh, your two 4x4 four four timbers to actually increase the height of your, your bulkhead. But anyway, I had, so I had this strap 
chain, chain, chain strap. And I got it all secured and I had it done quick. It, it was amazing on how well it went. And it was supposed to be a preloaded trailer. Thank goodness uh, that wasn't, <laughs> I got in there and they hadn't, pre, they hadn't preloaded it yet. So they did a live load, which is so much quicker. Pulled up, they, they lower, they, they have massive forklifts, they put this stuff on. And I threw my securements on based on that 38,000 pound value. Well, I secured it, went inside, got my paperwork, and I was looking at it, I'm like, 42? Oh man, that's 2,000 pounds more that I need to throw a piece, of, I need to throw securement on there to cover that extra 2,000 pounds, so. And the only timber I didn't have a chain over was this front one, so that, I try to keep my securements as close to the timber uh, because of how tight we get these to uh, prevent it from bowing and permanently bending any steel bars that we carry. Even though these are thick, you can put some serious leverage on your uh, pry bar to get your snap binders over. So anyway, also these are what we call the number one there's three, di there's three different types of hookups we can do. This is the number one. And it goes through uh, around this pocket. I, I've, steak pocket, I guess. No, steak pocket and uh, I don't remember what that's called. But anyway, you go around it, up through the steak pocket and hook it. And that's the preferred method for securing chains at Maverick Transportation. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best. I'm just saying this is because, I mean, there's people that are going to disagree with me on how to secure stuff, but anyway. And we also use these really thick um, rubber uh, coil pads that uh, usually use for protecting all our steel that we can. We throw our chains over it, and, and when I pull my chains off um, on Friday, that's another story, uh, there'll be some serious gouges in my these rubber pads. So this trip it's going from Fort Smith to uh, somewhere near Detroit, Michigan. I can't remember the name of the city, but it's pretty close to Detroit. So it's like 980 miles, but it doesn't deliver until Friday at 9. So I, my goal is to get there by 8 a.m. And I'm going to have to drive a couple hours on Friday because I still have... 13, 12 or 13 hours to go and with an 11 hour day it only gives me two hours I have two hours on Friday to play with but Fridays are always the tricky day and the reason I say that is, is it takes I think my wife she looks every time I get close to Friday my wife is like okay where are you dropping off let me look it up on Google Maps Okay, it takes nine hours to get home from where you're delivering. So if I were to drive nine hours from there, I can make it to Madison. But I have those two hours I gotta drive in the morning, not to mention the unload time and whatever I'm picking up to hopefully bring me by my house after, you know, whatever load time. They, so they could eat into my 11 hour clock. So odds are I'll be getting home Saturday morning. But anyway, so that, I think that's about it for uh, today. Um, as I often forget to do, I drive for Maverick Transportation. I know there's a lot of people that uh, I think uh, watch these videos that uh, may deter, because of what they see, um, decide to go with Maverick to drive. And uh, that's cool. If my videos helped you make that decision, uh, please give my name as a referral to your recruiter when you apply. Now, there's also those people that have applied who have watched my videos and like, you know what, I'm going to go drive for Maverick. And have already applied and they think, oh, when I show up, I'll give them Dale's name. That's too late. If you've already applied and you haven't given my name as a referral, it's not too late. You can call up your recruiter and say, hey, can you have 
put Dale's name in my file as a referral, and they will do it. As long as you give it to them before you show up, we're all good, and every little bit helps my family. Peace.